And uh, if you'll turn there with me, I trust our Lord will bless you each with the uh, understanding and the reading and understanding of his word this morning. And may God help each of us to make application. Romans chapter 5, reading of verse... Uh, verse 1, and I'm in the book of Hebrews. I'm going to get back to Romans here, so we'll get to Hebrews later. But Romans chapter 5, if you would please, says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Amen. Uh, you might think about that by way of review. Uh, real peace, lasting peace, everlasting peace, only can come from your Heavenly Father. Yeah. <laughs> We have lots of, lots of issues in our life, but I tell you, there's one thing, one being saved, you, the issue's been settled in a matter of eternity and matter of salvation, but there's also, um, you know, we have peace with God in that sense, but then there's also the, the peace of God that I'm not sure sometimes we as Christians <laughs> uh, always have in our lives. Yes, we know we're saved, but yet sometimes we're perhaps just as fretting and just as worried as the, as the lost out there. If you look at me in the book of Philippians chapter 4, the book of Philippians chapter 4, by way of review, you have peace with God, then there's the peace of God. In Philippians 4, verse number, let's read in verse number 4, Rejoice, Lord, always, and again I say rejoice, let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Amen. Be careful for nothing. Uh, quit your fretting and worrying. Uh, we've, we've looked at scriptures in the past in the book of Matthew. It doesn't change anything. But Brother Doug, don't you fret and worry? Yes. Unfortunately, pray for me. Amen. Um, I realize I shouldn't, but there's times I do. And uh, uh, often I trace that back to not being, in a sense, staying connected with my Heavenly Father like I should be. But it goes on to say here, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And you get caught up in the news media enough during this week, I guarantee it, you're going to be um, fretting and worrying about things. The news media can take a subject and beat it into the ground, literally. Amen? But listen, God's children ought to be in the Word of God. God's children ought to be able to look past some things, recognize where we're living, what we're living for, who we're living for, see the big picture, so to speak, and keep on with life for Christ. Does that make sense? It's easy to get caught up, whether it's talk radio, whether it's the news media on TV. Yes. Should we be aware of things? Yes. Just don't get caught up into the point that you're fretting and stewing and worrying about. God's in control. Right. Amen? Is he not? Amen. Yes. Thank God for that. It says, The peace of God which passeth understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, there's the pursuit of peace we looked at a couple of weeks ago. Look with me in the book of Psalm chapter 51. Book of Psalms, chapter 51. David was a man after God's own heart, correct? Oh, I, I, if I could just get just a corner of David's life sometimes. Just, just a, you know what I'm saying? Um, that closeness to God, that service to the Lord with joy and happiness, that desire to be used of God, I mean rejoicing to be used of God, rejoicing to be around the people of God. Yet, you know, David, David tripped and stumbled too from time to time. You'll find when you get away from God, now, now think with me just for a minute here. You're prone to blame everything around you but yourself, first of all. Yes. Husbands, we tend to take it out if we're not careful on the wives. Amen? Amen? Or the children. Wives, sometimes vice versa. We're prone to take it out on our fellow brothers and sisters. You were prone to see the warts and corns a little more clearly in other people's lives and not our own. You'll find when you get away from God, it's incremental. It starts little by little. And if you're not careful, well, you can end up kind of like Jonah, so to speak. Amen? Amen? You could end up, in a sense, like King Saul. God's man. In the end, he, it's like he wasn't connected anymore with God. He'd lost God's hand of blessing. You'll find often if, you're, if there's this discontent in this... This um, background of irritation in your life. You know you're saved. Folks, may I suggest, perhaps you're not right with God. 
<gasps> Come on now. Let's get down to where the rubber hits the road. Amen. Oftentimes we're simply not right with God. In Psalm chapter 51, we'll not read the whole chapter, but in a sense, David had to be brought to himself too. The pastor had to come and make a call. Amen. He said, look David, if, if you're not going to figure this out, let me help you. Okay? You may not like that, but listen, thank God for it, or you will later. Amen? Amen. I, I did like seeing pastor through the keyhole of the door one time many years ago. But it's a wake-up wake call. Amen? It's a wake-up call. So if there's a... And let me say this. For those of you that like to get in the middle of business, pray about it first. Amen? You know, pray about it. We like to correct. We like to give wisdom and counsel. Amen? But pray about it first. Psalm chapter 51... David had to take care of some business. And eventually, it comes down to between you and your Heavenly Father. Period. Amen. It says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge that this is the tough part. For I acknowledge my transgression. Listen, that, I can pray and ask forgiveness and leave half of it at the altar. You find, and you walk away from the altar, well, I'm right with God. No, you're not. Yeah. Eh, no, 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 no. And God's telling you that. The Holy Spirit said, look, you left half it on the altar up here. Amen? And took the other half with you. However you want to look at it this morning. It says, For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned. And I'll tell you what, when God gets a hold of you, it becomes clear after a while, wait a minute, I've sinned against a holy God, my Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen? Does that make sense? It's, we'll, we'll, it's, wait a minute, it's a vertical issue. Yes. Yes. Oftentimes, God's people are unhappy, and we're blessed, folks, above what we deserve. We're unhappy because we're not connected with God like we should be. Oh, we go through the motions. Amen. We can, we can say the right things. We can pray the right prayers, but we're not connected. Why? Because there's sin between God and ourselves. It hasn't been dealt with. Is that possible? Right? So do some reflection. Inter have God help you with the reflection this morning. You connected this morning? You at peace with your Heavenly Father? Oh, you know you're saved. But are you at peace with your Heavenly Father? That's the question. It goes on to say, Against thee the only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. God has all the facts. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. You notice the order here in Psalm 51? Folks, often the discontent in our heart and lives, it's not necessarily the job. It's not necessarily the husband or the wife. It's not necessarily the children. It's not necessarily people itself. Amen. That's not what the psychologists are telling us. Amen. Often the problem is with God's children and their relationship with their Heavenly Father. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Yeah. God wants close fellowship with us. Does he not? But what breaks that fellowship? Sin. Now look with me in 1 John, if you would please. You know these verses. You should know them. 1 John.
In 1 John chapter uh, number 1, verse 3, it says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If we say that we're in fellowship with our Heavenly Father and we can't get along with our fellow brothers and sisters, there's something amiss. If we say that we're in fellowship with our Heavenly Father and there's hatred towards people, there's something wrong. Amen. If we say that we're in fellowship with our Heavenly Father and there's hatred toward another group of Christians, there's something wrong. It goes on to say, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. How is it with you this morning? You know you're saved. But are you connected with your Heavenly Father? Are there things in your life that you've allowed, so to speak? Sometimes the garden needs to be weeded on a regular basis. Amen? If, it, if not, it starts to take over one's life. It, sin will rob you of your joy and a lot of other things along the way. The pursuit of peace. Stay close to your Heavenly Father. Keep a short list. Amen? Now, with fellow brothers and sisters, Romans chapter 12. Amen. That good chapter. Amen. Yes, sir. Folks, this isn't complicated. Amen. This is not complicated. Um, but Romans chapter 12, not only is there a need to be in fellowship with God, there's a need to be, in a sense, right living and at peace with, with fellow man, but in, in God's children. Amen. Romans chapter 12, in reading in verse number 16, it says, Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. You don't have to get even. Amen? Yep. God keeps a careful record book. Let God deal with it. Right? Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible. If you've got a pencil on... <laughs> but that's no fun. If it be possible. Isn't it more fun to have a good, like, rumble sometimes, right? Huh? You just got to blow off steam? You know, you'll find that when you're in that situation or that mindset as a Christian, it's amazing that the one that you're annoyed with will be in your path that morning. Amen? It never fails. And the flesh will let her rip. And you'll feel good about it for about a minute. And then the Holy Spirit of God. So what are you doing? Amen? You're not right with me. We need to have a talk. Said, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Look for the avenue of peace. Seek peace and pursue it. Amen. You be the peacemaker. Amen. But that's no fun, Brother Doug. You be the one out on the highway on 35 when it's stop and go traffic and somebody just rear-ended your bumper that you get out and recognize perhaps it's of the Lord to witness rather than in a huff and a puff. If I say this carefully. It's just a car and praise the Lord. I don't have a dent in it this week. Amen. But you know what I'm saying? You be the one to seek peace. Look for it at work, at school, family, church. Be the peacemaker. If you have nothing good to say, say nothing. Amen. <laughs> be quiet. Keep, keep the peace. It says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. 
Romans also, chapter number 14, verses 17 and following tells us, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Be the peacemaker. Amen. How is it with you this morning? You saved? You know you're saved. You get peace with God? Take it a step further. Are you at peace with your fellow man out in the workplace? Are you at peace with your fellow brothers and sisters? If not, ask God to help you take care of some business there. Amen? Yeah. Yep. Ought to be peacemakers. Seek peace. Pursue it. Now, if you go back with me to Romans chapter 5, not only do we have peace with God, being justified by faith, we have peace with God in verse 1, but folks, we have access. <laughs> Amen. We have access 24-7. Do you ever grow weary with the, I have to make an appointment? Those of you that spend any time in the military, you just didn't walk into the commanding officer's office. You had to make, an, you had to, so, so to speak, go through the chain of command to get to that point. Unless he wanted to speak to you. Amen. And your name came up, which usually was not a good thing. You don't just walk in to see the President of the United States. I'm here. I've got an issue. Let's discuss things. Amen. Corporations, you don't just walk into the CEO's office as a rule. You might have to speak to your manager first. But folks, <laughs> Romans chapter 5 verse number 2 tells us, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Do you think this morning about the access that we have to our Heavenly Father? What a privilege. Look with me, if you would, please, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2, if you would, please. I'm only going to read this one verse. You can go back and read more of this if you'd like. We'll be looking at Ephesians 2 as well as Ephesians chapter 3. But Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18. For through him, speaking of Jesus Christ, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now hold that thought and look with me at Ephesians chapter number 3 if you would please. Ephesians chapter 3 verse number 12. Look, look with me here. Since whom we have boldness and access. I like the way this is put. With confidence by the faith of him. Amen. And I'll hold that thought. Look at me in the book of Hebrews chapter 4. The book of Hebrews chapter 4. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 14 tells us, Neither then, that, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Folks, you have the greatest access there is this morning. Amen. How is it with you? I mean, this is 24-7. This is, this is like now. Amen? Access. Confidence. With boldness. Look who I'm approaching. Amen? But not with haughtiness or arrogance. You'll find here it says in verse 16, Come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Folks, we have the greatest access there is to the greatest source of help there is. And sometimes it's the last source we go to. Amen? It's the last source of help we seek. How is it this morning? Amen? Been a while since you've been taught, you know, uh, shall I say, a conversation with your Heavenly Father? Been a while since you've sought God's help? God would like, I think, us <laughs> on the smooth and easy sailing sometimes, if we'd only, only allow God to work in our life. God would like to help, but we don't seek His help. How is it with us this morning? How is it with me? Uh, greatest access, greatest help there is that are, so to speak, available. Romans, or Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 19, it says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest, 
by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. How is it this morning? You talk about access, folks, huh? With confidence, with boldness. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go with me back to Romans chapter 5, if you would, please. About out of time, but Romans chapter 5. Verse number 3, Romans 5, goes on to say, But not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Ah, glory in tribulations. Brother Doug, you've got to be kidding. I thought when you're saved, it should be smooth sailing. No, listen. It's sometimes it's just the opposite. Uh, the trial and tribulations are going to come. If you look with me in Hebrews chapter 11... In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. Hebrews 11, 24 tells us, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to, be called, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of, reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect and the recompense of the reward. Moses, trials and tribulations. Look with me, in, with, with me at Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. 2 Corinthians chapter number 11. Brother Doug, I thought it was supposed to be smooth sailing. Well, you find yourself closer to God during the, during the easy times or during the rougher times. Think about that this morning. Amen? 2 Corinthians, if you would please, chapter 11, verse number 24. Paul, speaking of trials and tribulations, verse 24, The Jews five times received I forty stri stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Boy, the ministry is a great profession, isn't it? Ah, uh, amen? I wasn't told this. Once was I stoned thrice, I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those those things are without that which cometh upon me daily to the care of all the churches. Wow. Huh? Trials and tribulations. I wonder if it made Paul stronger or weaker. As we look at this lesson, I think you'll find it drew Paul closer to God. God is trying to do some refining. God is trying to do some backbone building. Come on, folks, right? I mean, a sp the, the hangnail shouldn't keep you out of the service of God after a while, right? The torn fingernail. It ought to take more than that to knock God's children out of the saddle in the service for God. God's trying to do some building. Trying to do some building. You'll find trying to do some refining. Trying to get his children out of kindergarten and first grade up into middle school school, then on up into high school, so on and so forth. Look with me, if you would, please, in 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. The trial and tribulations are going to come. You mean God's got a plan with some of that? Yes. 2 Timothy chapter 3. In verse number 11. Oh, let's back up in verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will love godly in Christ Jesus. Look at this verse right here, fellow brothers and sisters. God didn't give us a free pass, a headache-free life, so to speak, on this side. A guarantee. There will be no trials, no tribulations, no persecution. Wrong. The Bible says you're going to go through some. Amen. I suspect in this country it's going to get worse. Yeah. I suspect it. It goes on to say here, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving... I'm sorry, verse 12. Yet all that will God, live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 
But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived, but continue. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. The trials and tribulations are going to be there in life as a Christian. You're not going to get around it. Sometimes you won't understand it at the time. Later on you will in looking back. Paul in, in the prison ministry. Amen. Now think about this with me just for a second. At that stage of Paul's life, I think he understood some things. In fact, I know he did. He didn't look at the prison ministry as, oh no. Right. Amen. The, right? He looked at it as, yes, as an opportunity. Who got saved, right? Amen. He looked at it as God placing him there for a purpose. I was dreading in some ways teaching on this because I could see God said, good, we'll put that into action this week and we're going to test that, right? Amen. But it's when these come along in your life, first off, God knows all about it. He's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. So as a Christian, you have to back up and say, Lord, what and why and how could I be used in this situation? Or this, this, what's going on? What is your purpose, Lord? Help me to, to understand it. And if not, at least give me the grace to get through it. You'll find also, if you look with me in the book of John, chapter 15, the book of John, chapter 15, we've been looking specifically at Moses. We looked at Paul. You can look at others. You could certainly study the life of Joseph. I like the way that ends up. <laughs> in a sense, but, but God, but God was it thought of for good or whatever. You, you meant evil, but God meant it for good. Yeah. And, and, and Joseph recognized that. But in John chapter 15, if you would please, John chapter 15, reading in verse number 18, it says, If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Now you think about that this morning, and we're out of time here. One more scripture we're going to look at in Philippians chapter 1. Um, we're not above the trials and tribulations or the persecution. We're going to go through some things. The beauty of it as a Christian is we're not going through it alone. In Philippians chapter 1, reading verse number 27, it says, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake having the same conflict which he saw in me and now here to be in me. And we are out of time, folks. That stand will be dismissed with a word of prayer. Thank you for your attention. I trust the scriptures have been a blessing to you and that you go back and review some of the things that were taught this morning. Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Father, for your amazing grace. Thank you for your patience with each of us. Thank you, Father, for your watch care. We'll never know, Father, till we're on the other side of all the things that you've taken care of us, taken care of for us, the little and the big, Father. Thank you for being so good to this church. Thank you, Father, for the word of God that's preached and taught here. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the pastor. May you bless the service to follow. May your hand be upon each aspect of it. May Christ have the chief seat. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you to know and to do his will today. God bless you for being here.